both. Okay, you can see it side by side, both right. Okay, all right, great, cool. Uh, then uh, I guess we can start it. So uh, on the right hand side, obviously I cannot open uh, like an actual Netflix application. So I mean due to some reasons, uh, but uh, I have opened some like kind of like a demo Netflix application, how it looks like. Okay, so you can see like this is what we are going to build right now in this milestone. I know like all of your most of your uh, like from the beginner background background. I'm expecting you to at least understand the JavaScript. Okay, so I I can understand it's not possible for you to learn the entire React JS or entire building an entire Netflix application in two to three hours. Uh, but just try to like look at this particular webinar as how am I building the application rather than focusing on understanding the individual concepts, right? So because if you get into understanding individual concept, then it will take more than three hours, obviously, because understanding the entire React JS, it's not possible for you to learn it in three hours. That's why we have an entire complete full stack engineering program to just uh, like make you to understand React JS, Node, etc. But right now I will be just walking you through how to build a Netflix application. Just try to look at the flow. If you have any queries, I'll try to make it as simple as possible. But if you have any queries during the flow, uh, just ask me. I mean, don't hesitate to ask the questions at all. But I may not explain in-depth understanding of a concept, uh, but I'll just briefly try to cover it. So just whenever it's possible, just try to uh, ask the questions once. Again. Cool. All right. I hope all of you understand what I'm trying to say. Okay, so firstly, uh, firstly, uh, to start with, what is React JS first of all, right? So I think all of you know what is JavaScript. I think most of you know because that's one of the prerequisite for this particular webinar. I think we have been mentioned in the uh, posters as well everywhere. Uh, so like before jumping into the uh, uh, what do you say React JS, JavaScript like quite uh, uh, got into too much demand due to various reasons because the kind of flexibility that it has to create different kinds of an application, like no matter what, it can be a front end or a back end, or or let's say a desktop application or mobile application. Anything you can be able, able to build it with JavaScript. Like for example, uh, JavaScript you can use the JavaScript to create web application front end, which is React JS. You can use the JavaScript to create mobile application using React Native, which is a JavaScript language only. You can use the JavaScript to create desktop application using Electron JS. And you can also use JavaScript to create, uh, what do you say, a backend, uh, the entire backend also using uh, Node.js and Express.js. And you can also use machine learning as well, uh, machine learning models in the browser with the help of TensorFlow.js. So now JavaScript has grown hugely that it can be, it, it is everywhere. It is everywhere in the entire software uh, technical industry, right? So now we are looking at one part of one technology of a JavaScript right now, but there is more than this. Uh, there is more than like React JS. There is more than uh, Web JS. Uh, sorry, Electron JS, Node JS. There are a lot of places the JavaScript is being used, but we will be looking at one part of it, which is React JS. So before even getting into the React JS, I'll tell you the small history of uh, JavaScript. So back then, JavaScript was a uh, like a only browser language, which means JavaScript is understandable by only browser. The uh, the engine that is used to understand JavaScript is included in the browser itself. Right now it is called V8 engine in Chrome and another engine in another browsers, but every browser has a JavaScript engine. So what uh, recently, I think it's 2004 or something like that. So what happened, uh, someone has used the JavaScript language because it's very easy to understand and developer friendly so that it, uh, they have taken the engine of the browser and created an environment so that you can also run the JavaScript on the runtime environment as well. Let me repeat that again if it is confusing. Back then, before introduction of Node.js, JavaScript is used to uh, run only on browsers. So, which means that if you wanted to handle any uh, like uh, interactions or handle any DOM manipulations in JavaScript in browsers, you can use the JavaScript language. So, but later, because of the flexibility, because of easier to understand, because of developer friendly, the JavaScript has also used in the runtime environment as well with the help of a Node.js environment. Basically, Node.js environment uses the JavaScript engine, which is included in the browser. So, so that it can able to used in everywhere. So that's how the JavaScript evaluation has started. 
and it has grown until then right so now uh, for, like one of the uh, framework that uh, one of the library that quite popular was react js so now what is react js react js uses the node js environment which is used to run in the node, like uh, what do you say runtime environment but uh, the react js is purely for the front end if you wanted to create a front end application you will use the react js and you can also use react native electron js for mobile applications and desktop applications that's an another scenario but if you wanted to create a, a front end application with uh, a lot of functionalities that are provided useful front end functionalities like component based declarative approach and virtual dom to make it rendering again i'm not getting into like an in depth like concepts of like what is react js and what are the advantages of react js but just assume one point is that react js is used to create a front end of an application especially for the web application right it can be used for mobile and web for both but especially for the web application yeah someone has a question rahul panda i guess you have a question you can ask it in the chat if you have any questions yeah just simultaneously ask the questions i'll try to answer it whenever i look at it okay uh, i mean you don't have to like uh, uh, what do you say wait for me to answer immediately because uh, i will just catch the flow and try to answer it okay if whenever you have any question just uh, try to like a uh, message in the chat i'll see i mean since there are only few people i can i think i can able to manage it to answer your questions okay yeah, all right so that's for the journey of a javascript now the javascript we will be using one technology of a javascript which is react js to create the front end okay we will see that i hope all of you know how to create a front end applications using html and css like that's a basic thing that you might have done initially when you started the programming it's very fun because creating an application with html and css is very fun it's kind of very fun right so you might have like most of you in the call might have done it and most of you in the call already have uh, a basic understanding of javascript so that's what i'm assuming that's why that's what i'm assuming it right now uh, but uh, if if someone doesn't have uh, any programming experience uh, sorry any understanding of javascript or html css this session may be a little difficult for you to understand because the prerequisites for this uh, is uh, the javascript itself okay so that, now some uh, rahul has asked a very interesting question that what is the difference between react js next js node js and there are a lot of things with js 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 etc basically everything with J js means that you can able to use javascript language that's it don't confuse with that if it is js next js react js node js express js like all of these are uh, like have the capability to use javascript language that's why it is mentioned with the js uh, like at the keyword but now coming to the actual question the difference between the the, the comparison of react js and node js next js can be uh, like a mostly under the same category but react js and node js right node js provides a functionality to run the javascript on the runtime environment mostly you can in a simpler words node js for back end react js for front end okay so that that's as simple as it i can explain react js there are two types of environments i mean like layers one is a front end application which what you see in this netflix right now and one is a back end application which is what is behind the netflix that whenever i wanted to fetch this data how can i get this data and how can i let's say uh, like authenticate to this application and when, when i click on this what data i have to fetch it so there are a back end part of the business logic of an application and the front end part of an application now the front end part of an application is a react js just to give you an example and the back end part of an application is a node js okay now comparison between react js and next js is that react js is completely client side rendering and next js is server side rendering now these are two different terms for you because this is little confusing react js and next js these two are used to create the front end only both are front end but react js is for front end and node js is for back end node js is different which is for back end and react js and next js are both created for the front end but rendering of the front end will happen on client side for react js rendering of the front end is will happen on server side on next js to explain in a very simpler words like if you wanted to fetch entire build of an application like the entire complete application to the front end like let's say any application have a piece of a code let's say this application has 1000 lines of a code entire netflix application let's say 2000 lines of a or 10000 lines of a code right and uh, this friend page of netflix is 1000 lines of a code and sign in page of netflix is 1000 lines of a code and let's say individual movie page of netflix is another 1000 lines of code likewise your entire individual page of a front end 
is divided into multiple lines of a code, which is combined together. Your entire application is all lines of a code, right? Now, when it comes to React JS, when you request any application here, Netflix dot application dot com or Amazon dot com or something like that. The React JS will basically React server will basically return the entire 3000 10000 lines of a code to the front end, which means that all of the code base, uh, the entire build of an application is returned to the front end, which is to the browser, so that you can able to quickly access it between one to another. That is one thing with the React JS. And next JS is basically that you will request only what you need. Let's say, for example, I need only the front end page the, of code from the server. Then you will request only these thousand lines of a code from the server, which is quite faster in the initial rendering. So it's completely up to the requirement. So do you want it to like a focus on SEOs, search engine optimizations, and initial renderings has to be faster, or do you want it to like by using the server side rendering? You can go ahead with the next JS, or do you want it to like, like not get into the complexity of server side rendering? Use the proper client side rendering so the entire application build will be on the front end. You can go ahead with the React JS. I would not say. Uh, like uh, what is best among React JS and Next.js, but personally, I'm a fan of Next.js. But Next.js uses the React JS only, like for your information, with an additional functionalities. Next.js uses React JS itself. All the React JS concepts like states, props, components, declarative approach, all of these are already being used in the Next.js. But additionally, it provides some more functionality on top of the React JS to make it much more simpler and easier for to accommodate to the server server rendering. All right. So React JS is for client side rendering and next JS is for server side rendering. And what is best, I can't say it because it completely depends on a uh, uh, requirement. What do you want? So yeah, you, you have to make a decision based on what you need. Okay. So like, like for example, if it's a very simple application, nothing much in terms of like, like say like a, it's not a complex application at all, very simple application. Then I can go ahead with the next day, sorry, React JS, which is very easy to use. I'm not, I'm not worried about SEOs. I'm not worried about let's say first time renderings faster. So I'm not worried about, worried about if any one of those, then I can go ahead with the play in React JS. But if SEO is my prioritization, search engine optimization is in my prioritization and uh, initial renderings are my prior prioritization, then uh, I can go ahead with the next day. So it's completely based on the requirements. All right, I hope I have made clear with the React JS and next JS. but both are used to create the front end only. It's just that one is used on the client side, one, of the, one is used on the uh, server side. So yeah, so I think maybe you will not get a complete 100% idea about it, but you will get to know once you go into research about it, because I'm, I'm not expecting you to understand 100% of what I'm uh, explaining in this particular session, but just try to consider this as an initial point, like a trigger point, or let's say uh, like a reference for you to go ahead and do more and more research about it. Okay. Consider this webinar as well, because like it's mostly not possible to explain everything in these two hours or three hours, right? So yeah, so keep, keep go ahead with asking questions. I can explain as much as I can. Uh, so if you have any questions, if your diet is, doubt is clarified, uh, just reply uh, that you have, that it is being clarified. Or if it is not clarified, then you can keep on asking the questions on particular question. Okay, all right. Cool, now, so let's get into this. Like where, where was, uh, where was uh, I? I was explaining about uh, the React JS, right? React JS is used to create the front end of an application. So uh, let's start with uh, like a basic React setup, okay? React application. So if you wanted to create any React application, basically there are a lot of uh, boilerplate packages. I mean, uh, boilerplate code provider packages available. One of the packages is called Create React App. Create React App. Usually, if you wanted to create any any application. You will have to install everything by yourself. You will have to install, uh, let's say, you will have to install uh, your the uh, React packages. You will have to install Node.js. You will have to initialize the Node.js. You'll have to install, uh, let's say, a lot of other dependencies, React DOM, a lot of other dependencies which are required for your React application. But this Create React app will provide you a, like a very good functionality to set up the entire environment for you all by uh, with one simple command, this like very simple, uh, this is the one simple command to like, we have it here. Okay. So, but before, before getting into this, before getting into the react case, I've got to explain one thing, which is the data. So now I can create the Netflix phone application, but where can I get this data? Where can I get, let's say this entire movie scar data, right? Usually I have to get it from the backend. I usually have to get it from the backend where, uh, the backend provides all of this data, like a trending movies. 
and top rated movies action movies comedy movies horror movies like all of the different categories of the movies i have to grade from the back end but since we are not focusing on the back end right now because it's going to take a lot of time for we to uh, for us to build it there is already a lot of uh, back end available in the internet uh, like a fake back end or otherwise like a mock back ends available uh, which when which will give you like a ready made apis you can easily able to call it uh, once uh, what do you say if you wanted to fetch the movies data like for example it's i'm going to search for uh, movies data api okay apis okay let's let's pick one of the most popular one let's say movie database like the tmdb tmdb like it's a replica of imdb uh, basically if you wanted to uh, what do you say fetch anything related to the movies like mostly all the data like images uh, like a production production companies and 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 let's say uh, details about the movie is you can able to fetch it from the tmdb database it, it can also have a nice documentation i recommend you to like go through this if 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 you wanted to uh, what do you say uh, like uh, research more about the tmdb but i already have a couple of things set up uh, i will use that up but for just for the explanation purpose i'm going to start from the beginning that uh, let's search for uh, tmdb sign in because if i wanted to query any tmdb right i need an api i need an api uh, uh, what do you say uh, api key that i have to access right so for that i have to log into the application i don't know if i have registered or not uh, let's see or let's start with the sign up soul and uh, Again, I'm I'm performing this step. I'm performing this step to identify, uh, sorry, to to generate an API key where I can able to uh, uh, like uh, fetch the data from the databases. I'll show you with one example, uh, but just uh, bear with me. Just give me one second. I have to verify uh, the email. Let me open my Gmail in the meantime and then verify it. I hope all of you can able to see the screen just like before. Just at, respond with yes if you can able to see the screen. Okay. Okay. Now I have signed up to the uh, TMDB, which provides the movie database. Okay. Now I can go to the I can go to let's say I basically I wanted to fetch an API here. Okay. I can go to the API. Okay. I can get uh, like like the API keys and all the details about. Uh, I mean, if I wanted to like uh, query the database, I can uh, uh, like uh, I have to fetch the API key over here. So firstly, I have to generate the API key. Let me see where I can able to generate the API key. It's been a quite long, even I haven't. I'll go to the settings, click on API, and I'm generating the API key. Make sure that it is secure. It has to be secured. I'm just showing it for the demo purpose. I'll delete this API after this, but make sure that you don't reveal this API key to anybody. So I'm going to accept this uh, this one, and I have to give an application name here. Like uh, let's say application name is uh, Netflix clone, an application URL. Let's say soul.io. Like I can give any kind of URL. Uh, clone of an application. From Seoul. First name, let's say I'm going to use Sakit Seoul. Phone number. I didn't give any random phone number right now, but I just know.
okay now i got the api key i can use this api key to fetch any movies information okay so i let's say let's let's take an example of one of the one of the movie here i'm going to query this particular api request this is a get request okay i'm going to directly open it in the browser because it's a simple get request itself you can see all of this data so this is a data which will give you the api which will give you the data of an api so or for example let me show you now like a like a proper uh like uh with the postman you can also query this api with the postman as well but i have like a vs code which has uh which has a nice uh like a extension or rest api extension which you can able to query from the here itself so i'm going to create uh i'm going to create a new file here let's say example example dot http Okay, I can query this. I can query this. I can send a request from this here itself. You can see this is the data. This is the data language. These are all of the headers here. So this is my actual data. So this is one of the movies that I have requested from the AMD. I can request a lot of movies actually. I'll show you how to do that. But this is the this is the movie's data. This entire this is JSON format. I hope like if you have an understanding of a JavaScript, you should have an already like a clear idea about what is JavaScript over here. So this is a movies data. Like each and every movies data has a bunch of like information. Now you can see backdrop path, which is an image URL. This is an image ID. I can use this image ID with some base image, base URL, and then do that. I'll show you how to do that. And there is a home page, home page of this particular movie. So the movie that I'm uh, like requesting right now, which is ID equals to 550. You can see that I have requested movie slash 550. 550 is one of the ID of a movie. So maybe we don't know, but we we just picked it from the example over here, right? So this 550 movie belongs to what are the movie called a flight club, uh, flight club, right? Flight club. So here this is a this is a movie, uh, and uh, let me expand this. Yeah, this is a movie which can have like a home page, like a details about the movie. You can see that I have open, let's say original, original uh, uh, like uh, where you can able to watch this movie over here. And there are some images, there are some genre, what is the genre of this image, I can also categorize the genre and description about the image and uh, title about the image and uh, IMDb idea as well, because even in the IMDb also we have the data and there are some image posters as well. A lot of information, we will see what are, what are the information that we need and what are the information that we don't need uh, in this in this current in this current uh, this thing so yeah just keep this in mind first of all if you wanted to uh, get all the movies data you can create an uh, tmdb uh, database i mean api uh, set up the tmdb api with an API, generating an api key and make sure that this is secured don't reveal this to anyone i mean i will delete it after this session but don't reveal this to anyone because uh, usually don't no one will uh, reveal the api key to anyone okay so now if you wanted to like a, make a query to this any kind of an API because there are a lot of plenty of APIs over here. You can look at the documentation like a developers dot uh, the TMDB movie dot org. You can look at this documentation which has a lot of uh, like uh, APIs on the left hand side. You can see here like genres. Like if you wanted to query all the movies by genre, the API endpoint is slash genre slash movie list, which will give you like a, this kind of a data. Okay. It will give you all of this kind of data, journal ID, name, action, etc., multiple actions. And like a movie. So here you have a list of movies, movie slash movie ID. That's what we have queried actually here. Movie slash movie ID is 550, which we got the data in terms of like you can see adult, uh, adult backdrop path, genre, all of this data, which we have seen it in the uh, in our in our application itself. Okay, all right. So now likewise, you have a lot of APIs here. You can see get details movie and get keywords, get images. Uh, get similar movies right and get rate movies delete rated get popular movies stop it like all of these are we are going to use used in in our application itself in our netflix application itself like training applications stop rated all of these apis are registered in here so i have all of these apis handy uh i kept it so that we can we can save some time so just keep this in mind that we're going to use this api if you wanted to get in more detail go to the tmdb.org and research about all the APIs that are available, you can include these details in your application itself. But typically, this entire backend is usually created by the company, which is, let's say, Netflix itself. But since we are not focusing on creating a backend right now, I'm using one ready-made API that is available in the internet, which can return me the data as of now.
so let me know if you have any questions on this particular point until now regard related to the tmdb so i'll try to answer or i'll try to address those okay we'll move on and uh, what next i have the api setup i have uh, this uh, what do you say uh, api setup ready and the next thing is i have to like start the react application as i said that you can start the react application by using something called a create react app you can just use this command npx create react app which is going to run which is going to create the react react setup so i'm going to i'm going to open the terminal here so vs code has the terminal so i'm going to open the terminal here let me uh, get into my folder Okay, so I'm going to create an application here with npx create React app. You can see the command here. If you run this command, you will it will it will generate the entire code base, boilerplate code of what you need for the React application. I'll explain that once it is got created. So first of all, I have to check the node version because uh, create React app need uh, like a 14 version above. So now I have let's say 12.1.8 version. So I have to update this node version. Let's say I will update the latest version. So I'll be using the node latest version here. And yeah, now I can run the command npx create react app. And my application is, let's say, Netflix, Netflix clone. This is my application. Okay, so it's going to create uh, like all the packages that are required for our application. So like everything, everything that is needed for my application is going to be uh, like installed by this particular command itself. Okay, so this is this is one of the advantage of Create React app, which is that you don't have to install any packages by yourself, whichever is required. You can just uh, simply run this command, which will install all the necessary packages for you to like uh, focus on developing. So basically, Create React app says I can handle the setup of an environment, development environment. You can take care of. You can you don't have to worry about it. You can take care of implementing the code. That's what it is trying to say. Right. That's why there is a package called React Reactor, which is an official React JS package itself. You can able to use it to create and set up the React application. So once it is uh, installed, all the packages, you can see that it is installing React, React DOM, React scripts, CRA templates, and a lot of other packages. And at the end, you can also see how many packages that it got installed. You will see like uh, in a couple of minutes, you can see uh, one thousand three hundred seventy one packages are installed. Like installing all by yourself. Like by npm install something, npm install something, then it's going to take a lot of time. By the way, if someone ha doesn't have an, any idea about npm, uh, so let me explain that. There are we 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 explained about the node, right? We 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 talked about the node. Uh, yeah, we've talked about the uh, node, which is a uh, which is used to uh, run the JavaScript in the run, run, runtime environment. Likewise, uh, with using that node, there are a lot of packages that are created, like a lot of third party packages that are created, right? Like one of the packages is called create react app, which is used to create a react application, but it is hosted as a node application. So all of these packages are hosted in the NPM. NPM is a node package manager. If someone doesn't know what is NPM is, NPM is a node package manager, which can have the details of all the applications, all the packages. Let's say for example, react package is also hosted in NPM, which is a node package. And React DOM and Lodash. Lodash is also hosted in React application. So now all of the packages are hosted in NPM package manager so that you can install all of the packages that are required from the NPM itself. Okay. So that's that's basically like an NPM. So if I have to install any package from the node, I have to type npm install and my package name. My package name. My package name. So now here I have to install for to set up the React application. I have to install React, I have to install React DOM, I have to install, let's say, Babel, Webpack, a lot of packages that I have to install it for setting up the React application. So that's why this Create React app exists so that you don't have to install all of the packages. You can just focus on installing uh, installing uh, like required packages that uh, you uh, need for your application. Okay. I hope all of you understood what I'm trying to say here. There are a bunch of packages, node packages, which are hosted in the NPM, which is a package manager. So if you wanted to install all of the packages or any one of the packages, you can directly fetch it from the NPM install the package name. Okay. So again, like there are a lot of things are involved in this particular setup itself. You don't have to like understand everything, but uh, just try to understand as much as you can. Okay. 
because as i said like it is not possible if you just know javascript if you just know html and css it may not possible to understand everything in detail but just remember these things and you can research about those whenever the session has ended as well okay someone was asking what is npx npx is sometimes you need a package but you don't want it to install the package in your computer you just wanted to use that package to do something else like for example create react app right create react app i don't want it to install the package but i wanted to use it whenever i need it let's say for example i wanted to create a react application i can simply use npx create react app and my application name npx is like executable npm package which is that i'm not installing the package technically but i'm just using the package which is hosted in the npm package manager so that it can download that temporarily and use that package and you and and then again remove the package from the buffer memory okay so in what difference between npm install package name and npx package name npm install package name which will install a package in your computer but npx will not install a package in your computer it just executes the package in your computer without installing it that's for the difference if you wanted to more detail about it just try to like understand from the google but that's for the main difference so here in this case i don't want to install the create react app package right so that's why i have you i've used uh, npx because i don't want to install it i just wanted to use that package from the npm so that's why i've just used npx create react app okay so now i have the netflix one application created i can get into the netflix one application okay now uh, you can see there are a couple of things that already got installed okay i can now uh, let me let me open uh, let me open this uh, in the folder uh, just give me one second Cool. All right. I guess I guess you all can able to look at my screen. Just let me know if you have if you know. All right. So now I have the so after I install that uh, after I after I execute that command, I have all the files that are necessary for my application are installed. You can see like a public folder and src folder, git ignore, package.json, read node modules. A lot of packages are already been installed here, and a lot of setup has already been done. You don't have to like. understand each and every stuff here because it will be too much for you right now at this stage but let's just focus on src only right now i'll just focus on src only let me delete some let me clean up this uh, by removing some unnecessary things i will not need this 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 i'm going to delete all of this one because this can avoid this can make you to uh, like uh, into the confusion okay i have simply have app.css just focus on src folder like if you are not aware of these three maybe we can discuss this all of the other uh, files we can discuss those at the end of this session so if you have an src i have an app.js component and index.js component which will like uh, render you uh, in the react application so firstly like with this example uh, i wanted to explain what is react application before that let me start an application and we can start so it's going to start an application on 3000 port localhost 3000 port the react application has started it's loading uh, in the browser let me i have to remove a couple of things from here Since I deleted a couple of things, then I have to remove all of the unnecessary files that I need. So me, but it may little confusing for you to like get into a lot of things right now. Okay, so now I have a simple localhost three thousand, which is a hello world. Now look at this. Look at this piece of a code like app dot js. Right. If you wanted to create a UI before, what do you used to do? 
like the previous day, let's say you're going to create some file called index.html, right? And you can write HTML file, HTML code uh, with simply writing, let's say H1 tag or div tag, uh, something H1 tag and uh, image tag. You have a lot of tags in the HTML, which is a separate HTML code, right? And if you wanted to use JavaScript also uh, in uh, your uh, application, you will create separate file called index.js, let's say test.js file, uh, test.js file, and you will write some JavaScript code over here, and you will import this JavaScript code in my HTML file, okay, with a, with a simple thing called script tag, okay. So all right, so this is what this is what we have uh, done until like before, like before React.js. If you wanted to create his, uh, UI, like a, uh, what do you say, front end of an application, you will create HTML, not only one HTML, you will create more and more HTML, about.html, lava.html, and let's say contacts.html or products.html, movies.html. There are a lot of HTML files you will create, and every individual file HTML has an HTML code, and you need to also have the JavaScript code beside it. Okay. So now with this app.js, you can see, look at this. So with the React functionality, you can create HTML, which is in React terms, it is called as JSX, JavaScript XML, because you are writing a JavaScript inside an XML, uh, like a file. That's why it is called a JavaScript XML file here. So here uh, you can use a JavaScript and HTML, HTML. It's not actually exactly the HTML, it's equivalent to the HTML, which is JSX. But you can use HTML plus JavaScript in the same file, which is .js. React provides a functionality, uh, which is called a component-based. So now this is particularly a component which, where you can write like these are particularly a function. Like if you have, if you have, if you wanted to add any numbers, right? You create a function, let's say add and you return, uh, you, you let's say return a comma, like pass a comma b parameters, a plus b, okay? So now the, this is a function which I can reuse it multiple times whenever I wanted to use the same logic, right? I can use, let's say add by passing one comma two, I hope all of you know this stuff because uh, this is from the basic JavaScript only this particular part. So add two comma three and add three comma four. So these are all functions which I can call, which I'm calling the same logic again and again, so that I can I can get the output of a logic which is a plus two, a plus b, right? So now similarly, what React has done. So here, if you wanted to reuse a logic, I can simply able to wrap that logic inside a function and reuse the same kind of logic every time by just calling the function, right? Similarly, what React has done, why can't I perform the same kind of functionality in, in a, a front end as well? Because it, before React JS, there is no such way that you can reuse the components, right? So what React has done, React has created a function, which is called a component in, in our world, let's say, let's say component. So this is, these parameters that you are passing it all are considered as the props. And this return A plus B logic, whatever you are returning, you can return the HTML. Okay, let's say div some history. Okay, now same logic, whatever we have seen it before, you can reuse the logic multiple places and multiple times. Similarly, you can reuse the UI as well. I will I will show you exactly how to do that because this is a very powerful tool in React.js where you can also reuse the same kind of logic multiple times. Okay, just like you are reusing the addition logic multiple times. Similarly, you can reuse the same component multiple times, UI multiple times. Because let's say if you look at React application, React application, you can you can look at a lot of uh, similar UI uh, available over here. All right. Let's say for example, if you look, if, if you can look at this this particular card, Netflix originals, right? This card, this entire image card, is similar to all of the cards that are on the right hand side. Like all of these cards are very similar to each other, right? All of the UI. And if you look at this particular section, trending and the and the images. This is equivalent to this, just the data is getting changed, right? So there are a lot of reusable components, which are getting like, uh, what do you say? Uh, like reused multiple times. So why can't we do that with the HTML is what React has thought about. Just like, let's say there is a logic called add function. I can reuse the function multiple times. Similarly, why can't I do that with the uh, UI as well? That's, that is the reason why the React has created this component based structure with the help of, uh, with the help of, uh, what do you say? Uh, uh, JavaScript and HTML itself that you can create a one UI and reuse the same UI multiple times. Let me show you that how it's going to happen with a very simple example. Like here, I have taken the header. Let me remove this. Let me create a one more new component over here. I can create a new component, new file, uh, test 
dot test dot js okay okay there is already test dot js okay there is already test dot js okay let me reuse this only test dot js okay so here let me remove this html file which is not required here so here i can create the same component export default function test component and this component is returning h1 okay let's say hello world okay now if i wanted to use this component multiple times if i wanted to use the same h1 ui but even though it is a very simple like consider this is not only for h1 let's say this entire test component has a lot of logic related to the entire components right so let's say i wanted to use this h1 i can use this h1 or i can use this test component multiple times in my app component by just importing the text comp test component here which is import test test from dot slash test component okay i can use this test in the div with this usually as as we seen as like before you can you can call the function by test like this this can be a function called by wrapping it in the basis because the javascript expression but instead of doing this react what it has done since it is a ui it is a representation of ui you don't have to call the function because just test is technically a function right is a function you don't have to call this function what you can do you can use the representation of an xml itself test i can i can consider that as a function call itself okay so if you can look at it hello world is getting printed here i can reuse the same test function multiple times i'll get like a multiple hello worlds here now like consider this individual hello world is equals to one individual this movie entire list this entire list now i can reuse the same movie list multiple times by just creating one component i hope all of you are guys are following now you might be having a question the data in these four or multiple sections are different to each other how can i reuse the same component that's a that's actually like a valid point now instead of hello world let's say i wanted to display like for multiple multiple test functions instead of hello world i wanted to genuinely display like a name here so in those cases what you can do you can pass some props okay pass props is an object which contains all the parameters that you pass it from here okay you can pass something like okay name equals to soul okay soul hyderabad okay and name equals to soul uh mumbai or otherwise let me use the constellations like cohort constellations at soul let's say delphinus and uh pegasus name pusa name equals to tago okay so let, let me let me use it for for now so i have a test but i want to display this name for every test now i what i can do inside the test i can accept the props i can use instead of a world i can remove this i can use a curly braces because i wanted to use the expression of a javascript inside the uh, jsx i can use props dot name okay so now if this implementation i can reuse the same i can reuse the same component but, but with different data okay now you can see hello delphinus hello pegasus hello arsa hello pavo okay the same ui but with different data assume the same kind of a functionality here as well the same ui like a text on the on the top like multiple image cards over here text on the top multiple image cards the so same ui at multiple sections okay multiple sections which means that i can use the same ui by just passing the data that i wanted to render it in the, into this component with the props any questions so far you can ask me in the in the chat until now so to just make it more clear if you wanted to reuse a function i think all, all of you i hope all of you know what are functions are if you wanted to reuse a function multiple times function logic multiple times you can just call the function by defining the function right that's what we know like until now because we have reused the same function logic multiple times by using the function uh, like a function call and function definition so here this particular uh, what do you say uh, like a react has what it has done it has applied the same kind of a functionality in the react js to reuse a ui because that's a very huge thing that we badly need for the front end implementation because there are lot of multiple places where we wanted to reuse the ui multiple times that's why react has created this component structure where you can reuse the same ui multiple times we will see in depth more in details in in, in upcoming components but uh, just just uh, hold me with this and you can reuse the same kind of a component multiple times by passing the data to it and by uh, 
uh, like updating the data uh, like whenever we want it like just like we did it here like props by passing the props to it props dot name here it is name because i am passing the name in the parameter here name equal to something all right so just let me know if you have any questions here now i can reuse the same component multiple times i can reuse the same same component uh, multiple times like as as many as i want okay that's why i'm doing it over here so yeah do let me know if you have any questions so that uh, this is a basic understanding that you need of the react js as of now so that i can jump into like the actual implementation of the netflix application okay so let me know if you have any questions i'm going to delete this one delete this stuff so so that i can actually write a better maintain a better uh, structure okay now my app is empty right now now here if you look at my app first of all as a react developer or as a as an any front end developer you have to divide the app into multiple components like here what are the what are the sections of this application now i have majorly here i have majorly uh, like a divided into three sections right one is the top navigation bar you can see this navigation bar like which has a netflix and which has like a user icon on the right hand side and another one is the uh this particular banner what you see here like this banner is randomly generated movies whenever you refresh the page you will automatically get like a randomly generated movie every time okay so first one is the navigation bar and second one is a banner and third one is the this movie list this is a movie list right and the same movie list is repeating multiple times here based on the category that you want all right so these are the three comp th three main different uh categorizations in my react application for this particular page okay so now i'm going to create those three components three different components for three different sections one is now bar and another one is a, a banner and another one is this netflix uh, movie list all right so for that i'm going to create a new folder called components folder because uh, like i'm pretty obsessed with the folder structures because i don't want it to make it too much complex if i if my application grows so here i created this uh, like a one folder called components folder and inside this components folder i create multiple folders again one is navbar okay this is one folder another one is uh, what do you say banner banner is another folder and another uh, folder is uh, movies list okay these are another folders so i have three components here banner movies list and navbar right three sections here navbar movies list, and banner so on each and every component i'll create a simple on each and every folder i'll create a simple component index.js and i'm going to create export default function a basic component but what this is a banner component right banner component and return uh, h1 or let's say yeah return h1 banner okay i'm going to copy paste the same file as of now copy the file and paste it in all the other folders as well paste movie list so but this is not a movie this is not a banner this is movies list and paste the same component here as well this is the nav bar okay now i have three components three initial components banner movies list and nav bar i'll be using i'll be importing all of these three components in my app.js file okay so here i'm going to import this uh, first of all i have to import this first of all i have to import all of this all of these components import first component is nav bar right first of all let me import nav bar from dot slash components slash now sorry now bar component and i'm just giving the relative path over here okay now i can use the now bar in my application you can see the now bar has been printed over here okay similarly i can import a uh, banner because next is the banner and uh, next is the movie list like multiple movie list actually so here i have the now bar and uh, next i wanted to import the banner i can directly vs code provides a shortcut to auto import it uh, you can see the banner has been auto imported over here banner and next is the movies list okay now we have now bar banner and movies list i can i have to reuse this movies list multiple times because i have a lot of movies list here right this is one movies list and he is one movies list and he is another movies list okay likewise i have multiple movies list over here so that i can reuse in the same kind of movies is multiple times just like i have discussed it before you can reuse the same component right this is wonderful example of reusing the same component multiple times okay so now i have the movies list i can reuse it i'll tell you like how to actually properly reuse it but first of all let's start with like a basic implementation of 
मूवीज लिस्ट लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द मूवीज लिस्ट ओके लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द वन मूवीज लिस्ट एज ऑफ नाउ ठीक है फर्स्टली माय मूवीज कंपोनेंट माय मूवीज लिस्ट कंपोनेंट हैज मेजरली टू सेक्शंस लेट मी रैप इट अप इनसाइड द डिफ ओके आई एम गोना ऐड अ क्लास हियर क्लास नेम इक्वल्स टू लेट्स से लिस्ट दिस इज अ लिस्ट एंड माय मूवीज लिस्ट कंपोनेंट मेजरली हैज टू टू सेक्शंस हियर वन इज द टाइटल राइट दिस इज ट्रेंडिंग or top rated or movie action movies or count this is the title another one is list of all images all of these images okay so first of all i'm going to add the title which is let's say let's say h2 uh title okay this is my title of the movies list now my i have i got the title of the movies list from here okay next thing is a section which kavish has list of all movies like here list of all movies okay like on the left on, on the scrollable horizontal side i'm going to i'm going to give a class name here class name equals to list underscore underscore let's say uh, movies okay so now here this is a place i wanted to call an api where to get to fetch the data okay so now one each and every movie is list i can reuse the same kind of a movies list multiple times but every time that i reuse it the api is different because for uh, for this for this i have to call action movies list api uh, for this i have to call comedy movies list api or for this i have to call horror movies list or romance movies list and documentary movies list and top rated and uh, like all other movies list basically i have to call different kinds of an apis because as i mentioned before like api this imdb provides a multiple apis here you can see get top rated get uh, popular get category movies get similar movies so get recommended movies there are a lot of movies here a lot of different types of movies now for every movie list because i will be rendering this movies list multiple times in my uh in my app.js component so for every movies list you have to call what api that you have to like call it like first of all let me take a one example of uh, this thing let's say for example let's take a let's take a trending movies trending movies right uh, let me close the other components now here i wanted to call an api which is uh, let's say trending movies okay so if you wanted to call an api right and you need uh, you will get a data from the api all okay? right so you need to store that data in one uh, like a state like every component has a state you have to you, you you have to store the data somewhere because you wanted to use the data to iterate it right you wanted to store the data somewhere so i can store the data in a place called a state react component every react component has a concept uh, has a functionality called a state state is a, way, a, a place where you can actually able to store the data you it just like there are lot of people in the world a lot of houses in the world every individual house has a store room right that store room contains like a like a like all the items that are related to that particular home right and every individual factory has let's say warehouses that warehouse contains all the all the products that are uh, manufactured in that particular industry so similarly this component house also contains a state you can use that state to store the data which are related to this particular movies list so here i have to i can create the store just like your house has a store room or warehouse or your let's say community has let's say one community hall so just like that every individual every individual entity here is a component has an individual state here that state is used to store the data of this particular component okay so now i can i can i can store a state the, the way that we use the state is that you can use something called use state is provided from the react itself you can say i important from the react use state and initially use state will be empty and uh, the data uh, the the data that is used state will be stored is that uh, let's say movies and if you wanted to update this data you can have something called a set set again i'm not getting into like an like an in depth understanding of why this is used like this because uh, this is like a very like a, what do you say uh, you need an understanding of react js more in depth we will talk about that more in the program but right now just consider that this state is used to store the movies right if at all if you wanted to update the state you can use set movies if you wanted to access the state you can use movies right just like you have a storage you can you can uh, remove items from the storage add items to the storage room right and uh, similarly you can also uh, access the data uh, from the access the items from the storage room as well similarly this is to access the uh, items from the storage room and this is to update the data i mean which is delete uh, remove the data or something like that right or update it or delete it something like that so here i can reuse the movies and i can reuse the movies uh, sorry i can use these movies to uh, display the data in the list of movies over here okay so this is the movies i want to store the movies here initially the movies list is empty right now here this is a movies list component 
I wanted to call an API. I wanted to call one API, which is which will be triggering the which, which is what we called the previously. I think you remember previously we have called an API, which is this API slash uh, movies slash something like that, which is going to give a list of all movies, and we will use that movies list to display it in the data. So to call an API in React JS, you have one hook called use effect. Okay, use effect. I imported the use effect from here. Use effect is used to call an API uh, uh, on the component rendering one. So, okay, so there are a lot of questions here, like what is use effect and what is this first argument callback and what is the second argument? To just give you in a very simpler words, every component has a life cycle. Just like we have a life cycle, uh, uh, let's say uh, like us people, uh, like a human beings has a life cycle from childhood to like uh, adulthood, uh, teenage or adulthood, or let's say like uh, old age, and like a death, you, you have like a birth to death, you have an entire life cycle of a human being, right? Similarly, the component in React.js, component has also a life cycle, right? Starting from mounting a component, unmount, uh, updating a component, initializing component firstly, and unmounting a component. There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of multiple life cycles of a component, right? Life cycle, uh, sorry, multiple methods in a life cycle of a component. Now this use effect is used to trigger any such kind of a methods during the life cycle, okay? The way that you use this use effect is different from each and every stage. That is again, too much advanced to understand right now, but just consider that this use effect will trigger this function at multiple stages of a life cycle. And you can define where you wanted to uh, trigger it. Like if you provide an empty array here, you are saying, okay, just trigger it after it is mounted, but only once because a component can be mounted multiple times, but trigger this only once when your component is mounted, right? That's what I'm saying it here. What I wanted to do it here in this callback, I wanted to call an API. Call uh, TMDB API. Okay. So this use effect again saying use effect will trigger this function on multiple stages of a life cycle, right? And the second argument defines where actually do you want it to call it, right? This function will be called in multiple stages, but second argument defines where do you want it to call it? Do you want it to call it in the birth of a component? Or do you want to call it in the depth of a component? Do you want to call it in the updating of a component? You can mention it in the second argument. The first thing that we have to, as far as this particular piece of the code concerns, that this first array, empty array defines that you can call this function at the mount of a component, which is starting like after the birth of a component. That's what I'm mentioning it here. So that I can make use of this use effect and call the API over here. All right. Okay, so someone is asking that, like, can I get the uh, video recordings for this? Yeah, I think like mostly you will get it. Uh, I think uh, Lavina will answer you that question at the end of this breakout and how do you access the video and all. Okay, all right. Okay, coming back to this, I have to call an API here, which is what we have called it over here. API is the, the, the movie uh, db.org slash three, etc. I have to call this API to fetch the data from the database. Okay. So now here, how do I call an API? So to call any API, uh, to call any API, React.js provides, sorry, JavaScript provides a function called a fetch function. Okay. Fetch function is uh, a, 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 one, a one function uh, which will be uh, executed uh, to call in any kind of an asynchronous uh, code, which is basically an Ajax code. Okay. So here I can use that function, which is a fetch function and uh, call any API that I want. Okay. Yeah, call any API that I want. Okay. So now I can use that function. How can I use that function? Let me create one more function here. Let's say function fetch data. Okay, so here I can call that function fetch and I have to provide an API here. Okay, and what is an API? Is an API. If I call this API, I will get a list of all movies. Okay, I can post this API over here. Okay, and this will return you dot then this will return you like a response, and you have to re return the response in JSON format. Okay, this might be a little confusing, but just just uh, like uh, hold with it. This, this data will return you in JSON format, and again you have to return the data from here. Which written the JSON format data from here, and you can access this data by making this function as an async function. This is a concept of an async await. Mostly, you should understand this if you're already familiar with the JavaScript. Const data equals to await fetch. So, now what does this code defines is that I have an asynchronous code here, which is fetch API. 
asynchronous code as in that it executes it, it it executes the code but it doesn't waits for the response it parallelly runs another piece of code but here you are stopping you are considering this function as an asynchronous code but you are stopping it here that i wanted to fetch this data wait until this got executed wait until this got executed and and uh, you use the data in the data like let me explain it in the clear words basically if you wanted to fetch any data you you have to it will take some time let's say one second of a time or two seconds of a time just like if you wanted to uh, reach to let's say from uh, mumbai to hyderabad it will take it will take some time right because you are going from one location to another location right and in the meantime when while you are in the journey you can also perform multiple other tasks as well like as you can watch a movie or let's say play games etc you are asynchronously performing multiple tasks with along with the other task right so similarly javascript also executes in such a way if something is taking it quite a time like a too long which is an asynchronous code you can you don't have to wait until it get returned but you can move on to other task which is next next tasks right but here async await defines okay stop here until it got completed until this fetch api got completed and return the data stop here okay so let me just let me just see that if this data is uh, getting printed or not console dot log data equals to data okay so let me see if this console is getting printed or not in the console i can i can look at this console dot log console from this console over here okay so i am not getting the data here because i am not calling the function this data function Okay, now you got the data here. You can look at it in the console. This is what we have seen it in the Visual Studio Code previously. I mean, this this data is equal to this data itself. Okay, now we have it in the console. We have it in the console, and this data has a lot of lot of information like a backdrop, path, and journal, and a home page, and IMDb, and a lot of information that I've seen before, like an overview, description, everything, etc. Right. So now I can reuse. I can use this data obviously in my application. But this is not the movie that I want. This is an individual movie, right? I'm I'm querying for individual movie, but I don't want the individual movie. No. i want a list of all multiple movies like a lot of movies for that i have the apis ready like let's say i wanted to fetch the recommended recommended movies list right so i have this particular uh, what do you say this api ready and this api key is equal to this api key okay i'm just fetching a data of trending movies so in this api this api this api defines trending all trending slash all per week so like whatever you whatever the week whatever the trending movies that are available in this tmdb data with this api key you can able to fetch all the movies now you can see it in the uh, list the data you can see here it contains a result it contains a lot of movies here now there are a lot of 20 movies here in the page 1 right so now i can access all of these are trending movies like you can see spider man no way home and uh, uh, you can see like a death of the nile and you can see a lot of movies available here and moonfall a lot of movies available here which are trending movies in this particular week okay i can use this data i can display this data over in my console okay so i can store this data here like how can i store this data as i mentioned you have something called as set movies functionality here so that you can actually able to set this movies inside your i mean store these movies inside your warehouse or your storage okay that's what i want to do it here so i can set this movies i got this data this data contain data dot results i got this data now i can store this data in my movies state this is my uh, component state okay so now i can use this set movies and i can set this with data dot results okay now i can console this movies let me console this movie movies from state because i have once i got the movies because once i got this data this movie is right inside the user effect i wanted to use these movies outside the user effect as well which is why i am storing this data first of all in the movies by setting set movies so that i can able to use these movies everywhere inside my component right that's why i am calling this console dot log outside the movies uh, so that you can actually see that whether these movies are getting triggered or not 
It will refresh the page and you can see movies from the state is initially empty because initially the movies is an empty uh, list here. But after some time, after the fetch data has been completed, the movies got the data which has which has a list of all the movies. You can see release date, etc. And all. okay. Now here, I wanted to I wanted to use those use those movies list and iterate that movies list over here and render that movies list in my component itself by uh, uh, by using the images by using let's say titles like a lot of lot of things you have right. If you can look at this clone particular clone, uh, this data will have a lot of data like a lot of information. Like right now here we have only image right here. So we will use the image and title of this, uh, like say movies list and we'll use the image of this particular movies list. Okay. So for that, I have to query through the movies because movies have the data here. I have to iterate through the movies, which is movies.map function. I hope all of you know what is map function is because uh, concept of, again, this is a concept of a JavaScript. That's why like a JavaScript is a prerequisite for this webinar. Uh, movies.map function and individual movie is iterated through the item and i'm going to return an image okay i'm going to return an image here return an image by passing an src src equals to every individual item which is nothing but a movie here wait let me show every individual item here which is nothing but a movie going to have an image here you can see there is a poster image there is a backdrop image i'll explain about both these both two but this is a poster path so this, this is just a path. This is not actually like an image. This is just a simple uh, path. All right. So now you can you can actually use this path. You can use this path uh, to append something to the image URL. Like there is, I, I'm going to create something called services services folder here. Services folder, and I will create one more file here. Constants.js file. So here I can create const. Okay, let me get back to this actually in a couple of uh, minutes. But first of all, let me append it over here directly. So first of all, I have to uh, like use the base URL of an image, which I have it already. I think uh, uh, stored it somewhere. Uh, I have the movies list. I have the base image URL because if I wanted to access this image, right? What I have to do, I have to append this image URL and slash. Then I have to paste this particular path. Then I have to paste this path, image slash path. Okay. Then I will get the image here, like an actual image that I want, which is that for every for every image, I have to use this use this uh, like a path before every image. Okay. I can use this path directly here and uh, append this with item dot. What is the path name here? Uh, poster path. Item dot poster path. Okay. Now you can see a lot of movies images has been loaded here. You can see like this is a uh, this is like very very huge movie because we use the original movie over here. Okay. These are these are Spider-Man and this is let's say uh, like some other movie like a lot a lot of movies are already like you can see all of the images of the movies are displayed over here. Okay, so now obviously this is not looking good because we wanted to display the movies like very nicely nice representation, right? So now uh, to do that, I'm going to style this. Uh, I'm going to add a class here and also some other properties to this uh, image as well. Let's say alt equals to item dot the name. So item is nothing but individual movie here. Let me change this to. Uh, uh, movie if it is confusing and uh, i'm going to provide a key as well because react js needs the key to identify which element which um, uh, component is rendered uh, movie dot id and uh, i'm going to add a class name class name equals to uh, what should i add list underscore individual movie okay sorry movie because movies are already there so i'm going to i'm going to class all of this stuff i'm going to style all of this stuff uh, by creating a one more a file called uh, styles.css. Okay. I can import these styles inside my, this is not, this is not new because he's just importing the styles 
uh, as you import it usually in, in your any HTML application. Dot slash styles dot. Uh, what do I say? CSS. Yeah, so I have the styles.css here. Now I have to style these movies. Okay, so I can style these movies by writing this particular class. Firstly, let me style this list underscore movie here. And uh, let me style this out, little underscore movie. And I have to obviously give, I have to change the width and height of this movie. Otherwise, otherwise it will be. The uh, so I have to like give the height and width of this particular image. Otherwise, it will be like say like uh, very huge. So let me let me give width as a hundred percent and a height let's say hundred pixel. Okay, which looks like this, which is very weird. And uh, here you have something called object fit contained, uh, which you can like uh, fix it like this, or you can also keep it let's say one fifty pixel or one twenty pixel as well. Like object fit, object object fit is basically to uh, what do you say? So this is hundred. This is one twenty. Object fit is basically to like maintain the resolution of the images, like according to the width and height. It, it's basically like you you have seen what happens, right? If you remove this, it will spread across all these things. But based on the width and height, it's gonna uh, like uh, uh, spread it across really like very evenly. So I'm gonna increase this. Let's say one fifty pixel. I think this looks good. Okay, this may be somewhat a little better. So I have a list of all images here, list of all movies here, like a 20 images that I have it already here. Now I have to like spread it like in the same row, right? Because I, I wanted it like one after each other, like this. I want it like one after each other like this, right? So I can spread it like a same row by styling something called because all of these things, all of this, all of these movies are appended inside the uh where is my component index row are appended inside this list movies, right? I can style these list movies. I can style this list movies by adding display flex flex box user to like style it one after each other like this, right? But you can see that it is like uh, like like going it in the what do you say like beyond our width itself. Okay, so this is not looking good. All right, so in this case, uh, I can add uh, overflow overflow x. Overflow X uh, scroll and the overflow Y hidden. Okay. Now you can see like it, it has added a scroll bar. You might not see the scroll bar here, like a, like a small tiny scroll bar over here. You can see some scroll bar here. You can easily able to scroll the movies instead of like uh, scrolling it from uh, one to another. And uh, now what is next? What I was saying. Yeah, you can add some. You can individually add some like a padding between individual movie as well. Like maybe something like padding, uh, padding ten pixel, okay, which will get like a nice uh, like uh, actually let's call it as a margin because this is technically like a margin over here. If five pixel is too much, maybe you can consider eight pixel. Or uh, let's say five pixel. Anything works. I think five pixel looks good. Okay, so now we have a list of all movies over here. Okay, so one after each other. Similarly, now I can reuse the same component like a title and movies, title and movies, right? Where is my title? Title is inside my movies list. Let me remove. So my, I have the title here, I have the movies here. Now I can reuse the same component multiple times. You can see that same component is being reused multiple times. So like you can you can generate a list of all movies randomly. Okay. Now now I'll I'll tell you how to how to render a different kinds of data. But this is what our component is. What we have seen it over here, like a basic skeleton of our component, right? So this is basically like you scroll left to right, and you can get this. I I will show you like how to add these animations and all. But this is what pretty much that how you can actually create the list and reuse the same kind of a component. Okay, so title and uh, these images and title and images and title and images. And I'll show you how to use the different uh, like uh, images and titles for one to each other. 
okay so is, so far if you have any questions you can ask me uh, so that uh, I'll, I'll also have uh, some water so in the meanwhile if you have some questions you can ask me right now immediately Sorry, I accidentally stopped the sharing screen. Okay. All right. Can you all see my screen properly? Just let me know which screen do you see right now. Can you all see Visual Studio Code and uh, the browser? So I hope no one has any questions so far. I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but uh, uh, just saying that if you have any, because like those are in-depth, might be in-depth questions, but if you have any questions, you can ask me uh, like uh, yeah, in the chat, I'll try to respond it as much as I can. Okay. So TK, so now I got the movies list. Okay. So I'll, I'll have a different set of movies, but how do I handle like a different categories of movies? Because I have a lot of uh, sections that I wanted to display because one is trending and one is uh, top rated common movies, et cetera. Right. But I, I, how do I, how do I basically display those individual movies? This is what my question, right? So what is varying between in the code wise from the code point of view, what is varying between one component to another component? Like what is the difference between this movie's list, like in the code point of view, like technically from the code point of view, the difference between, let me just move this aside. This is kind of irritating. Yeah, from the code point of view, the one thing which is varying between this movie's, this movie's list and this movie's list is uh, two parameters actually. One is a title, right? You should accept title here. Title equals to, as a prop, you guys explained like what the props are before. Title equals to let's say here uh, uh, trending, right? And here maybe title equals to uh, action movies, and another title equals to let's say horror horror movies, something like this, right? So like let me remove this one. So I have an individual title. Now obviously I can accept this title here in the props as I shown like last time. Whether you can use it like this const title equals to props or you can directly deconstruct this particular object over here itself to make it like understandable i've deconstructed it over here because this is technically like an object like a props now we can use this title here instead of a static title okay like a same example that we have seen it in the previous uh like a, a starting initial example okay now you can see the title has trending action movies and horror movies, etc. Like a three different titles that is sorted. Next thing is the data, right? The so what what is varying between one component to another component is this API call, right? So here we are calling trending slash all slash week and the API call and something and and this API call, right? This API call will be changing based on whatever the item that you are uh, like uh, getting over here. Like for example, I can pass this API call instead of like like instead of passing it from here. I can pass it from the state, like here in, in the endpoint, right? So I can access, I can use this endpoint here. 
sorry. I can use this endpoint here, right? And I can pass the endpoint, like this, this particular endpoint from the movies list. Like if it refreshes, no, no, nothing will be gone because I am not passing the endpoint over here. I can pass the endpoint, which is the prop of the movies list equals to trending all weak API key, etc. Okay. Now I can pass the same endpoint. Okay. I multiple things. Okay. I did something wrong here. I have like a trending movies, action movies, and the API here, trending slash all slash API, like, like EN equal to something. Now I'm, I'll be using inside fetch, inside fetch, uh, like org slash three slash, uh, I think it should be something else as well. Am I passing the slash here? I'm not passing the slash here. Slash, slash from here so that and actually get the data. You can see that it's the same data, but here you have the functionality to update the API call here. I can update the API call from here instead of passing it from, like, let's say, instead of using them in, in the movie list. Okay. Now I have like a multiple API calls. Like I have like a like training KLA one API call and and uh, 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 the other information is clear another API call. I'll, let's say I will, I will uh, show you like a different kinds of an API call. Let's say, for example, another API call is uh, uh, top rated movies, right? So for this, these are uh, top rated movies, I assume that top rated, top rated, just simply top rated. Now here I can use top rated API key. So now this is my API key. And the data will be the, the data which is on top will be different than the data which is on like a bottom as well. Like the top rater will be different than this. One rater property of map. Okay, movies from the state is getting undefined. see what's the issue here let me see the data because something is uh, getting wrong here Invalid API key. Achha, I provided a wrong API key. Uh, which I think this is small mistake only. AP underscore key. B9E. I missed E at the end. Okay. okay. Now I got it. You can see now this data is different than this data because this is trending API call because you can see here slash trending API call. And now this is movie slash top rated API call. And this should be something else. I mean, let's say, for example, if you wanted to display like an uh, action uh, rated movies, right? Then we can call, we can pass the genre uh, API call over here. Like here, I can pass, you know, I can call this API call. I mean, you might be having a question, where are you finding these API calls? Again, I mentioned in the beginning only that you can find all the APIs from here itself. Like I'm not, I'm not going through individual like one by one because of the time constraint, but you can go to the movies here and movie slash movie like multiple categories over here that you can you can you can select uh, uh, different kinds of an API, API points from here as well like you can just scroll down expand and you can see this genre there is a, there might be one API uh, which fetched by genre and there is one API which fetched by watch providers and there is one API which fetched by uh, let's say uh, release dates there are a lot of APIs all here you can get the API calls from here but I have the ready-made available so it takes some time and we I'll be explaining it from here itself. So I have this API again. I can use this API key. And this is genre. Genre uh, is uh, 28, which is an action movies. 
uh, action uh, this listing of this action okay so now now if you can look at this data these three data are completely different to each other okay if you look and look you look at this i mean like uh, the spider man remains the same but other data because those two are concerned at the uh, like the same same what do you say same data itself because it's trending and also it's action the movie itself so now you can see like all of these three different data three different components are same but with three different data like three completely different data here right so that's one of the beautiful functionality of react js where you can actually able to use the uh, component multiple times over here so now here in our case it's updating it's like majorly the update is for two things one is the title and one is the movies that's why i'm passing these two as the properties here title equals to this endpoint and uh, a title equals to this what i wanted to display it over here and endpoint equal to this which api that i wanted to call it from here okay so now i can call i can i can call the apis i can like uh, i call as many apis as possible like i can call another i can reuse the same another another movies list over here let me say if you wanted to display uh, horror movies i can just uh, use the same uh, thing horror movies with january equals 27 that's it like because uh, horror movies called january is 27 for the uh, omdb uh, sorry tmdb api category now i have the horror movies again you have the list of all horror movies here okay likewise i can go i can keep on increasing the list based on what you wanted to display okay so i don't want to do like get into all of those movies right now but let's say four categories in enough as of now trending top rated etc right so any questions so, so far you can ask me in the chat because i know i don't see any questions i'm confused like if all of you are understanding or uh, like uh, completely overwhelmed at all so just try to uh, ask questions so that i can answer it uh, like a one by one okay okay so next step is that uh, we have to add a nice little animation over here like when i hover it when i hover on top of this when i hover on top of this is slightly like a uh, like scaling up you might have observed here we slightly scaling let me refresh this you can see like if i if i hover it it's slightly scaling up scaling up to like uh, one option like uh, on the like a uh, 2d scaling up well on the y, z axis right so now here i can do this by with the css property called scale up right so uh, for that i have to style the movie list so if i hover it you have to scale up this particular movie list let me open this uh yeah so this movie is list individual movie on hover this particular movie transform scale let's say uh 2 let me try with 2 okay so let me go here and when i hover it you can see like it is scaling up very hugely maybe we don't want this much maybe we can try it 1.5 okay all right so yeah this may be also fine but it is also like something which is not uh, like exactly with the this scale up maybe let's keep it as it is 1.5 or 1.3 also you can uh, keep it you can make it somewhat little lesser okay so now you can see one one more thing you can observe here that it is scaling up very hugely like like it's a uh, like without any transition it's is completely like uh, like uh, on to my face right so i can add some transition over here transition transition is used to add some transition effect transition i'm going to add transition to transform uh let's say for how many seconds uh, one second you can see like transition nicely like adding up on on top of the uh, like this movies itself right so maybe one second is like little too much 0.5 seconds maybe it will be fine okay so now i have added the same kind of a transition uh, uh, like over here to scale up to the uh, uh, this uh, particular level 1.2 maybe i can keep it because it will be too much now you can you can you can actually keep on trying it out and maybe try to make it exactly as it is so i actually don't know the exact properties but you can always inspect element and find it out what are the exact properties of those and uh, uh, then then uh, try to find out the transform and all so you can see transform is 0.45 seconds and uh, for individual uh, movie on hover it if you hover this particular image 
then you will have trans scale is 1.11 right for this particular uh, image and if you wanted to scale this particular image then the scale is then the scale is 1.1 and the transition is 0.45 so if i wanted to make it exactly like this i can keep it let's say zero, scale is 0.45 and this is 1.1 uh, 1.1 yeah i think it's uh, yeah 1.1 1 .1. so i can keep it like this exactly like this so you can go you can go and like uh, find out what is the exact scale up and then uh, try to find out like uh, 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 like an uh, to get the same exactly now you can see that it is pretty similar to what we have seen it on top of that but the styles can be applied to every component over here now we have a nice transition with transform scale up uh, option uh, to just make it uh, like over on top of it uh, to scale up uh, with the 1.1 1 .1 on the z axis just give me one second Yeah, let me see if you don't worry about this video recording. I think a lot of you are asking for the video recording. We will surely provide the video recording. Don't worry about that. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask me. Okay, okay. So I'll move on. So there is an, one 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 wonderful thing that you can observe it here that by updating at one place, right? By adding the styles at one place. It is getting updated at all the components here, not only for one component. That's one of the beautiful advantage of ReactJS. That's why it's a very huge, like a, a functionality, like a reusability of a component. I don't have to update it multiple places. I can just update it one component and it can be applicable to all the components, right? Like for example, one more, one more thing that I want to update here. I want to remove this, I want to remove this uh, scroll bar. You can see the scroll bar over here. Usually you don't have the scroll bar in the in the application you don't have that part of the scroll bar okay you can remove this scroll bar you can remove this part of the scroll bar by just updating the styles here here let's say movie uh, what is this scroll bar movies right so i can use this dot list movies web kit to apply it for all the purpose i'm going to use prefixes here like a vendor prefixes web kit uh, scroll bar uh, I think it's display none. It's not uh, like particularly uh, the display none itself, but it's scroll bar only. I think it hasn't refreshed. Let me refresh the page. Okay, it is movies, not movies. Okay. Now you can see the scroll bar has been completely vanished. Because we don't want to display the scroll bar because it doesn't look good. Like if you display something in the scroll bar, okay. Now, now you can hover it. You can get this information. You can get this, and you can see the padding on top and padding on bottom a little less because that's why you can see that it is restricting here, restricting here. Like small, slightly difference here. Maybe you might not observe it, but small. There is a small, uh, like a very slight difference over here. But you can avoid that by adding a more padding on top of like uh, on. For every uh, like for, what do you say like uh, individual movies here, it's like I can add a padding for the movies. Is let's say uh, ten pixel. Let me see. Yeah, now this looks good. Like previously, comparatively, if I remove padding, you can observe one small thing over here because padding because Nija you will have a space for scroll bar. So if you don't have the padding, it will be it will be like hiding behind this particular section. I don't know if you're observing or not, but I can easily able to observe it. But if I add the padding, so you can easily. Like it is like a smoothly scrollable. Uh, there is a small difference, but you can observe it over here. Uh, some people are raising the hands. So please feel free to ask the question in the chat itself if you have any questions. All right. So maybe like you can't speak, obviously. So just try to randomly like uh, ask your questions in the chat itself so that I can easily be able to provide you uh, like a uh, like answer your questions basically. Okay. All right. So what next? Like I have, I have this uh, completed. I have this. Uh, what do you say? Like a trending. All of these movies were completed. And of course, I will not exactly do as it is because, like, uh, uh, I will leave. I wanted to leave something to you so that you can also try it out and practice. Uh, so yeah. So first of all, my my individual movie list is completed. I can of course add the padding for this. All of this stuff kind of. But let me let me come back to this. Uh, uh, like uh, in a bit. Let me add some padding as well. What do you say? List dot list. 
margin ten pixel so that I can have nice padding on the left hand side. You don't you don't have to what you say like uh, like pretty sticky to the border here. So that's why I have a little padding so that you can have uh, like some space between left and right. Okay, all right. So what is the next? Now this is done. This our uh, section of the uh, the movies list is done. Okay. So next is let's let's look at the uh, banner. Right. I will I will I will look at the I will look at the background color and everything etc. So let's look at the banner. So banner ke liye bhi, we need to create a component. Same like the movies list, we also have the component banner component. Right. So same like the movies list, we also have to call an API which gets the uh, which gets what do you say which gets the uh, 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 random movie and it generates the movie poster over here. Okay. So I wanted to do the same thing for the banner as well. So is I will just remove this. Uh, I will just add div and uh, banner. And I wanted to call uh, the API again, as I said, use effect. Okay, so I have to call the fetch here, const data equals to fetch. And uh, I have to call the same API from the movie list only. But here, instead of, uh, I'm, I'm like, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm trying to do if you, if you are confused here. So in the banner, this is a banner, I need to display one movie whenever I refresh the page. I need to display some random movie to just uh, like uh, like as a banner uh, movie itself. So uh, for that, I have to call an API because I have to get a random movie from there. So the API that I have to like call in this uh, particular image is that uh, let's say I wanted to display all the Netflix original movies, right? I can I have I have some API called Netflix original movies API, uh, which is uh, like. Uh, uh, which is this API. Okay, so discover TV API key and I have to provide the API key to this. Where is my API key? Banner index .js and API key go to this. Now I can, I can get the API key, sorry, I can get the data, which is Netflix originals data so that I can able to display one data on top of it. So let me use this response.json and uh, let me grab this inside a function, just like before, nothing new here, fetch data. And I can define this as a string function. I think I've defined as a arrow function over there. So fetch data equals to same function and then all of this logic to the same function and I'll wait until this got completed and again I have to store the data as I mentioned so here I have to random movie banner movie right I can maybe select a banner movie set banner movie use state and initially it will be not you don't have a banner movie right now okay so now i can set this banner movie here first of all let me see the console what do you have console.log console.log the data let me see the dot data first of all and let's see what data are we getting it over here let me add some text here, banner movie text. So state is not defined, did I not define this state? Okay. Okay, uh, where is the banner movies? Banner movies console. Okay, I haven't called, again, the same mistake. I haven't called a function. And I have to call this function for only once. So I'm going to call an empty array over here. So now let's see now. So I have to call JSON as a function. So banner movies, I got it. 
like all the Netflix originals, Rizal Kandar, these are all Netflix originals because I'm not calling the different API, same API because here I wanted to display the Netflix originals ka band, uh, movie, right? That's why I don't want to call the like a same API that I've called it over here. So this has all the details of Netflix original movies. Now I wanted to get the random uh, movie from all of this ten. I don't want it to display, like let's say all the movies, right? I want to display like a random movies among all of those things, right? So now this, like the data right now, the data is const, movies equals to data dot results results is the data right so now i wanted to generate a random index so i'm gonna display like random index equals to here i will use something called math dot random so here 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 basically you have to provide uh, some functionality where you can get uh, a random data from the results uh, which is uh, 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 what do you say? Uh, multiple uh, math dot. Okay, so math dot flow here. This is a math dot flow. Multiplied by math dot random. Multiplied by movies dot length minus one. So what I'm trying to do here, I'm gonna. I'm, I wanted to get a random movie from the zeroth index to the last index. That's why it is a minus one length minus one because it's the last index. I want to get some random movie among all of this, among all of this result, right? So this is a logic to fetch the random movies among all of these indexes. So if you wanted the explanation of this logic, you can uh, like a uh, uh, like a uh, search it in the Google. They have a lot of explanations that I want to display right now. But I just briefly explain you, math dot floor is basically like a floor value, which is which is one point five, one point four, one point six will return you the one value, and math dot random will return you the random value between uh 0 to uh, 0 0.9 which is less than 1 right and this will be multiplied by the length of the movies which is 9 6 or 5 or 7 or whatever and which you multiply both of them you're going to get some random value between 0 to uh length of the movie so it will be a little complex for you to understand right now when i'm explaining it but just try to sit and do it individually with some examples then you'll understand it because orally explaining it will be a little tricky to explain this part particular concept it's, it's, it takes a lot of time but just try to see it and like a uh, uh, understand each and every concept over here first is math dot floor which returns the floor value of any uh, like any float value which is uh, 1.5 1 points returns the one value math dot random generates a random value between 0 and 0 0.9 and math dot movies dot length minus one will return you let's say if it is 20 uh, it'll return you 19 right so if it is 0 0.6 and multiplied by 19 which will which will give you like a number between zero to uh, zero to nineteen, which will uh, float the value and which will get the in, in random index. Now, if you wanted to get the random movie here, then you can actually use movies, movies and random index, okay, which will generate your ran random movie over here. Now you can see like a banner, banner movies. What the result uh, is here? Okay, let me see why this is returning an error i was doing some small mistake okay this is a non uh, not a number i think okay so i have to call the function random function i want to mention so here yeah, random index you can see nine and every time we rephrase the page the random index will be like uh, updating uh, every time we rephrase the page random index will be eight and uh, movies of eight will return you the random movie. Okay. I'm going to store this random movie inside my state called banner movie. Okay. So here I'm going to set, set state, set uh, banner movies and movies of random index. Okay. Let me remove this console. This not spam in the console. Now, if I console, dot log if i console this banner movie so it's other way around okay now now if i rephrase the page you're gonna get where is the banner movie will be mostly the initial stage but i think console actually so it wants i console it in the long my bad okay so you can see the random banner movie got displayed over here okay so i have to use this banner movie inside my banner to display 
uh, a section. So now I wanted to consider this banner as a header because uh, I can uh, because it, it is very helpful in the SEOs that if you mention the proper tag. So technically, this banner is my header. Okay. So now this banner, ke liye, okay, I will add some classes. Uh, class equals to banner, and here class equals to let's say banner header. I may not use this, these classes, but just for the for like if I need it, I'm gonna use it in future. But I have the header over here, like a header header uh, of a banner, and inside the header I wanted to use. Inside the header, I wanted to use some background images, some banner content. So because I have here, I have majorly for banner ke liye, I have uh, three sections. One is the title and the buttons and the descriptions, right, and the image, right. So all of this comes under the banner content. So I I will be creating one more div, uh, which is last name equals to banner content okay so here you will get some some content i will write small text over here but here in the banner uh in the header i mean in this section in this button section you need the background image so you have to set some styles inline stylings inline stylings uh which is let's say background image background image is code equals to you can you can you can usually you can usually mention the url url in the in the background images like by mentioning it in the uh literal string letters url of and the url of an image as i mentioned that you can actually use the url of an image from uh the movies list if you wanted to use any kind of an image first of all you have to append the image url this image url the banner image url and you have to append the banner movie again this is all the banner movie exists obviously uh, banner movie dot what do we have banner movie dot uh, back drop back sorry uh, again this is only if banner movie exists so i can i can mention this if banner movie exists then only render this otherwise don't render this okay so if banner movie exists then i'm rendering this if banner movie doesn't exist and i'm not rendering this particular information so there is a banner banner here you can see like a random banner is being displayed but it's not properly getting displayed but it is it is getting displayed i mean there is a banner over here you can as you can see from here so but i have to just style it so there are there are a couple of styles that i have to add it like i have to mention like a background size and background position etc so let me add uh, those quickly background background size background size is as uh, cover the background position center center just an object okay so now i have i have written uh, the background uh, image so that uh, uh, like my background image will be like a uh, placed in, in in the center and my background size is considered as a cover itself. Now let me go to the styles and actually style this particular background header. I wanted to create one more style here, styles.css, and I'll import this style inside my index.js. Styles.css. So inside my styles, I can actually style individual individual banner uh, movie and individual banner header over here. So first thing is that I have to like uh, style the I have to style the banner first of all, right? Because uh, like there is a there is a height and width of this particular banner. So if there is no height and width, if there is no proper height and width is set up, then you cannot actually like this image won't be displayed because there is only some set of a content which is 
uh, inside this banner. So if you keep on increasing the content, then it will be, be applied in the background image over there. All right. So now I'm going to style this particular banner, this entire banner. Uh, or otherwise, I can actually like do one thing. I can I can also remove this and place it in the header as well. But anyway, let, let, let's style this particular banner. And uh, let's give height is equals to, let's say 500 pixel. Okay. I can give the 500 pixel height. But this is not occupying uh, like a header. But let me do one thing. This. This. Consider this as banner only. Increase pixels. Then display this. Then return out. Now, how, now, now I got the height height of the banner, right? I mean, this is the uh, like image, background image of the height, but height, I think it is a little too much uh, for now. Let me update this to height as a 450, 450 pixel. And I'm gonna quickly add the other styles as well to this particular uh, banner. So uh, I the text that I want inside the banner is a white. So I want to add color white here. And again, to set the resolution object uh, like I want to set the resolution properly. So you can see the text is the content which, which is white, which is what I have it over here as well, right? And next thing is the next, let's let's go and style the, uh, the content inside this, which is inside the banner image itself. So under inside the banner image content, I have a two sections over here in the banner image content section over here. One is banner uh, title and another one is banner buttons. Banner title is something about a movie uh, image, uh, sorry, a movie name only. So I have the banner title, last name equals to banner underscore underscore the title. And one more section, banner underscore description. Okay. So banner title is a movie name, just like the banner movie dot name itself. So here I can write banner movie dot, I think it's uh, what is this? I think it's name of the movie so banner banner dot name and uh, we also have a couple of other things too like banner dot name and banner dot original name right there are a lot of other images banner dot title also you can consider but let's stick to banner dot name as of now let's see if we get any errors so some because sometimes from the tmdb database sometimes the original name will be empty and uh, name will be empty or title will be empty. So maybe we can, for the safer side, we can add multiple conditions here. If name exists, name, or if uh, original name, if name doesn't exist, then you can add the original name. Or if original name also doesn't exist, then you can add the title. So just, just for the conditions, okay. And the description. So the description can that we have, what do you have it in the description? Do we have the movie? Yeah, you have the movie here, Arena. And if I refresh the good doctor, the movie title here, and if I refresh it every time, you will get the movies here, like a house of secrets, etc. So, and next uh, we got the description. Inside the description, I got uh, two buttons inside the banner description. So, I mean, this is actually like a banner, banner, say CTS, call to action buttons. So here we have, multiple buttons over here and one button is what is the button one button is play and my list right this this time i'm going to add simple buttons for these two play and uh, uh, my list so i can add the class name here to this and class name equals to banner cta class name equals to banner cta because i wanted to style both as the same styles. That's why I have returned the same buttons over here because I have to style these buttons to same as it is, like as it looked like this. That's why I have returned the same uh, class name over here so that I can easily able to style it later point of time, okay? Now, if I go to the CSS, uh, in the CSS, I wanted to style these buttons, obviously one by one. Uh, firstly, I have styled already the banner. So let's style the banner uh, content, banner, uh, Content, okay, which is what I believe banner content is what it 
this i want to style this banner content so this banner content uh, styles uh, can be i can give some height to it uh, let's say height equals to uh, 200 pixel because i can i can like add something on top of it and and uh, and uh, i can give the space on top of it as well and i can give the padding top and height and margin width etc all of this stuff like a basic information to get it aligned in the center because you can see that it is aligned it here in in this section so that's why I'm, i can add padding uh, uh, top equals to let's say 20 pixel i think it has to be 100 pixel okay or there is 140 pixel so i can make it something in the center okay and i can also give margin left margin left equals to let's say uh, 20 pixel so i can look at this style and keep it side by side if i want i can style this properly so that i can make this particular section in the content maybe 30 pixel which is really too much i can this is still a little huge i can make it as 440 pixel uh, 400 pixel let's see how that works yeah i think this looks good this banner looks good right than the before one you okay, know i have the banner i have the play buttons etc and i have the content as well now i have to style the buttons right and i also have to style the uh, title as well because title is uh, like a like a normal text right now here so let me style the title let me add the style for the title font size equals to let's say uh, 10 pixel Twenty pixel, yeah, twenty pixel seems fine, and also have to weight the boldness of this font. I can write font weight equals to, uh, let's say, six hundred, so that it can add some little uh, boldness to it. And, uh, and I can also add some padding here, padding bottom because I need some space between the buttons and the text. Maybe uh, five pixel. Yeah, I think five pixel is enough for ten pixel. I think ten pixel. Yeah, this seems fine. And next, the banner, banner, CTS, CTA. Okay, so banner CTA has to be uh, uh, styled uh, with uh, this description. First of all, CTAs. Let's style the CTAs first of all. So banners, uh, these buttons should have uh, some width and some height and uh, some, what do you say, uh, like font sizes, like what is the base font size of these banners, etc. If I want to style something, I can add uh, width, uh, width equals to let's say uh, 100 pixel. So that like even if I reduce this, it won't it won't go to the like uh, occupy like a hundred hundred percent width. It will occupy only this particular section so that I can make it everything in the center. So again, next we have banner CTA. Okay, now this is this is a little interesting right now. So now firstly you have to add a cursor like cursor uh, icon here. So you can add a cursor equals to pointer, which can add a cursor icon when you scroll over it. Why well, it is not applied? Okay, it seems like Something I'm missing it out. Let me see. Banner CTA. Still understood banner CTA. So it should it should ideally add a cursor here. I might be doing something wrong. Process waiting added. 
உங்களுக்கு பரிசு வந்துட்டு Achha. Sorry, a small silly mistake. Has to be double underscores. Okay, so now you can see the cursor uh, has been added to this uh, button. And uh, then I have to uh, style this uh, in such a way that I can get this particular section. First of all, let me remove the border. Border equals to none. Right. And uh, I, can, I can give some uh, margin uh, between these two as well. Margin right which is like space between these two button let's say uh, two pixel so uh, five pixel let's call it five pixel all right and uh, then what is the styles of this button i have the white color here here i have the white tour button when i hover it it's running black let me let me style that later but first of all i have the white color text inside this so then i have to color is uh, white uh, by default and uh, then little boldness if you can observe it here which can which you can get it by font uh, weight which is 600 okay. you can add some like little bold to that and also the background uh, background color for this uh, particular element and, uh, maybe i can add uh, gray you can add a little bit, maybe not exactly equal, but like mostly uh, similar to each other. If you wanted to find it exactly equals, uh, I can, as I said, inspect element, banner button, background color, you can see here from here, and copy this, I can paste it over here, okay? I can, I can actually write the same kind of a styles if I wanted to get the same button over here, okay? I have the play button here, like a small, uh, Yeah, background color applied and uh, some, some slightly hidden because of the background that is also getting applied. And the padding also I can add. You can actually do the same stylings here, padding 0 0.5 to REM. And maybe I can use it in the pixels, let's say two pixels. Um, five pixels on the top and bottom and the uh, Right, maybe I can add uh, right and left. I can add ten pixels. Maybe a little increase in uh, the same pixels. Okay, small buttons over here. Okay, so now I also have the radius border radius here. I'm just adding some styles that are very relevant to this, but uh, may not be exactly equals. If you want exactly equals, you can find it from directly here. Okay, so don't worry about that because that that's an easy part only. Border radius equals to let's say uh, two pixels, which will have some nice border radius on top of it. Now, when I hover it, I wanted to change these colors and all. I want to change the background color to like a white and this to black. So for that, I can add banner CTA, CTA hover, hover. When I hover it, I want to change the color to black, change the color to black. And I want to change the background color to white. So in this way, when I hover it, it will be changing like this. Like if you want this kind of an effect, like changing the color to black, you have to add the like a uh, hover uh, effect over here. Okay. So it may not look exactly like this, but something similar to that itself. All right. So if I refresh the page, you get this. Maybe I can also increase the buttons as well. Button, uh, uh, what do you say? Uh, widths uh, as well. Do I see this? Here I can add 25 pixel to that little increased more to have the button. Hold on. 
and uh, what else what else do we have in the stylings anything okay description now we have the description again uh, now again the background uh, is very similar to what we have used it over there but you can also like increase some more color as well but i just try to use the same background that i have applied it over here all right so next the description description is basically like an overview like if you look at the console if you look at the console in the banner movie uh, you have some overview of it overview of individual image individual movie right i can use that overview in the banner index uh, in the description itself i mean here we have the cts and here uh, if Banner CTS and banner uh, inside the inside the banner. Uh, what do you say? Uh, content itself. I can add last name equals to banner underscore underscore description, and here it will be banner movie dot overview right so now i'll get some description about this particular uh let me say this text all right so now i can now i can style this text by exactly what i want from my movie itself i can add banner description styles by adding width the height and font sizes etc so i can add some width here so that it won't it won't like like if, if the if the if the description is long it is it is uh, stretching to the end of the size so to avoid that i can add the width equals 100 pixel so it will be like uh, 100 pixel or let's say 200 pixel or whatever depending on whatever the on until what wherever the section that we want it to be uh, get restricted so that like it won't uh, uh, like uh, restrict towards i mean it won't stretch towards the end of the thing it will be just placed nicely in one section itself all right and uh, font size Font size, I can change it to uh, 14 pixel, I guess. Font size. Okay, 14 pixel. Let me see actually what is the font size of this. Uh, font size 0 0.8 REM, we'll be using the pixels, but max with 360 pixel. I can consider this as a max width, I would say, instead of a width. Uh, max width. Uh, 360 pixels or 400 pixel whatever it is and line height line height equals to uh, 1.3 uh, uh, what else width uh, equals to uh, maybe 200 pixels equals to 200 pixels in fact we don't need width actually we can just leave it as it is so that it can just not exceed more than 500 pixels that's it okay so i can add some margin top which is 10 pixel which have some nice gap with it now i think it's looks somewhat similar to what what we have it over here in the banner and next, I wanted to make this style the navbar. Quickly, we can style the navbar because this is the last component that we have. And the navbar, let's go to the navbar. And here I have, I have nothing right now. Like it's it's pretty uh, plain as of now. Navbar is pretty plain. So now I can add. I have only two components in the navbar. Which is Netflix logo and this icon. Let's see where this Netflix logo is coming from. This is from here, upload.wikipedia, etc. So let me add an image here. This is SRC equals to the image of the Netflix. And there's also one more logo, which is this. Let me see this. Uh, 
Let me know that is coming from here. Which is this. One more image. SRC equals to image of that. You will see little weird stylings. You can see like uh, it'll be a uh, little weird because you are getting the entire section over here itself. But where did the fix has gone? The fix logo has gone. So as as I'm using the correct image URL only. The svg.png. Let me use, let me see if this guy is very easy using. Stuff not calculated. Now we have Netflix. Now we have this logo, both logo. Now you now you wanted to style this one. So let me uh, style this now. But there, first of all, let me add some uh, classes over here. Now, sorry, class name equals to now bar. Okay, so and I should add the alt to avoid matters. Netflix logo, and here alt equals to uh, our All right, so now I can style this Netflix uh, now bars. By creating a new style, styles.css, I can style this now. Okay, so firstly, what, what style that I have to apply it over here? Firstly, obviously, like uh, you have to make it uh, fixed because uh, you don't want it to like uh, occupy the space over here. So I'm going to add a position, position equals to fixed so that it will be like fixed to the top. It won't be like uh, dedicating a separate space in the section. So you can see this on top of this banner itself because you want this kind of an effect, this Netflix on top of this banner itself. So first of all, let me import the uh, styles from here. Import dot slash styles dot CSS. Okay, now let's see how it goes. You can see that it has fixed position, which is on top. It's not what we expected, but it is in the fixed position, which is on top. But obviously you have to uh, style this now, but uh, Images over here. So let me just uh, uh, style this up. Let me add class equals to uh, logo or now bar logo. And here I had class name equals to now bar or bar. All right. So I can style this. Now bar logo. Uh, with uh, width and height, and uh, uh, I can mention this now by itself here. Width equals to hundred percent, and uh, height equals let's say hundred pixel. So it will be like sticky to the to the section. So this also position fixed because as I said, like we want, we don't want it to move these elements to one it to each other, and width can be let's say uh, eighty pixel. This can be eighty pixel. Okay, object weight content to maintain the proper resolution. Okay. Same for now the. Author as well. 
uh, same position text width can be let's say 70 pixel or it can be same as well it can actually be reduced 50 pixel is fine object width and then 5 equal to 0 which you can make from the right hand side and this is left equal to 0 so here you can see there is a little bit padding required here for this entire navbar padding in pixel which is on top on bottom or maybe 15 pixel as well so here left maybe two i can keep it two but it will be fine right also can maybe two or one So, yeah, from the pixel will be fine. Or I can also reduce this to 40 pixel as well, or 30 pixel to even for that. So, now the Netflix and the icon on left and right. So, if I scroll this, that will be sticky to, sticky to each other. I can keep this to 30 pixel. And uh, yeah, this uh, now bar, I can make it as display flex. And, uh, then item center, move it in the center. Why uh, I can give it to let's say 50 pixel, 50 pixel, because this is fifty pixel, or I can reduce it down to. pixel as well okay this is fine now so now you can see a small difference here like if you hover it you can see a background on the navigation like a background color black on the navigation you can also add that like when like you have to add a little bit of animation over there like if you're just scrolling down you just have to add that background color so for that you have to add it in the index.js itself in the use effect because use effect is used to trigger something on the component date mount. So I can add an event listener here, window dot add event listener, which is a scroll event listener. Okay. Scroll event listener. So when I execute this scroll event listener, what needs to what needs to be added is what I can write it in the navigation bar itself. Okay. So here I can write if window uh, scroll, uh, I think it's window dot scroll y scroll y greater than 100 so which is that if i scroll the window which is more than 100 pixel then i can add some styles okay so uh, for that you can you can create a class here uh, sorry you can create a state here const uh, show uh, like uh, nav show nav nav uh, nav bar and set show nav bar u state is equal to initially it will be false because initially my navigation doesn't have to show the background color so now here once my scroll is greater than zero then i can set show nav bar equals to two okay or else else show nav bar else show now bar uh, can be false or you can or you can uh, completely uh, like uh, don't have to handle it as well right and finally when i stop scrolling it all when i exit in the component then i have to remove this uh, particular scroll bar event so here i'm going to use the uh, like a uh, uh, functionality of component uh, unmount so whenever i'm unmounting the component i can remove this event completely okay so here i can write window dot remove event listener of scroll Okay, so if I scroll the 
I can remove the event when the component is unmounted. So now this will get triggered. So whenever you return any uh, any function in, within the callback, so that function will get triggered whenever you remove the sorry whenever you unmount the component. So I don't want it to scroll. Uh, I don't want it to keep the event uh, added when I unmount the component. That's why I remove the component. This is a usual best practice. Even if you don't do it, uh, it's not it's not going to break anything. But it's the best best practice that if you remove unnecessary events whenever you are unmounting the component. Okay. Now now what I'm doing here. When I'm scrolling it down, you can see I, I can I can put it in the console. Console dot uh, show now bar. So in our application, if you can look at it in the console, something happened. Because it's only one, so I have to keep the these things in place. And, uh, you can see this when I scrolling more than hundred pixel. So until hundred pixel, it is false. If I scrolling up, it is false. But if I'm scrolling more than hundred pixel, it is getting true. It's getting true, like if I scroll, if I have scrolled more than hundred pixel, all right. So if I scroll more less than hundred pixel, it is getting false. So I can make use of you make I can make use of this. And I can uh, add that background color if I wanted to add uh, like uh, that navigation uh, black color background or not. Okay. But first of all, let me style. Let me style. First of all, let me add a class name here. Uh, nav bar black. Black background. Okay. Now I can add this back background in the nav bar. background color equals to black. So you can see the black color background has been added over here. All right. Now I can add this now back black background only if only if uh, where is this only if uh, the show now bar is true, like show now bar as in show now bar, let's say show now show black now, bar. let's consider that because it is very confusing. Show black now bar and set show now bar. And if only if so show black now bar is true, then I have to add this particular class called now bar. If it is false, then I don't have to add this class. Then I have to use this string literal so that I can add the class conditionally. So here, instead of adding this like this directly, uh, if only show black now bar is true, then I'm gonna add, then I'm gonna add this black color. Now, but otherwise, I don't want it to add that black color. Now, problem here. This belongs to this. This belongs to this. This is not a problem. Show my now. Stop. Putting it this. So now, now if I scrolling up. Until 100 pixel, it won't show. If I scroll up 100 pixel, it will show. Like that is what we are getting it here as well. Even if you go to original Netflix also, the behavior will be same. But if I just scroll up to the top, the Netflix and will not be displayed. If I scroll bottom, let's say you can set it to 100 pixel or 200 pixel or anything. Like right now, it is 100 pixel only. But you can set it to, let's say, uh, if I scroll, let's say 500 pixel, then you can display this particular uh, now bar. It's, it's completely up to you, okay, depending on uh, what you wanted to add it over here. Now, if I keep on scrolling this, until 500 pixel, it won't show now bar. If I scroll up to 500 pixel, then it will show the now bar, right? You can either display this. Some issues you, you can observe here, like it is getting on top of this one. So like this, like if I hover it, it is getting scaling up to the on top of this. Maybe I can add something in the now bar in the styles. So this now bar Z index equals to one so that Z index is basically like this is the priority one. So even if you hover it, then it should ideally not uh, uh, displayed on top of it. It will be under the nav bar itself. Like you can add the Z index to make it like on top of the uh, every layer inside your application itself. All right. Now, next final thing, like this is mostly well done. We're done with the Netflix, uh, what do you say, navigation and uh, this uh, banner 
and trending top editor all of these things are you just have to add the background color to this section which is the movie list section okay this is this is basically very simple you can just go to the movie list and just add to the list and uh, background uh, or uh, should we add it in the movie list or should we add it in the uh, what do you say in the application uh, style itself anything anything works you can also add it in the movie list and the application style as well and but in the application style it will be applied throughout an entire uh, class an entire application but still we have the background color here so it won't uh, make any difference background image it won't make any difference so we can add it in the application itself so let's go here let me remove all of this stuff uh, and, uh, stuff. i can add i can add some style uh, background color equals to black okay is it is it completely do we have to completely black or is it something like that i think we can add something mostly similar to black but not exactly black let me add black first of all and see what happens uh, this is an app class i can add this app class to an entire applications here i can move this to class name equals to this will add a background color you can see right now it's completely black like a pure black maybe i do not need a pure black uh, slightly uh, similar to black but not exactly black you can maybe get some differences yeah some slight difference over here you can observe not exactly black now we have to change this text as well like this title as well because it is currently it's in the uh, black section so you have to also update this to white so you can go to the movies list and uh, styles.css i have the title here i can add the class class name equals to uh, list title i can add this title in the movie list color uh, equals to white okay which will make it as a white okay now this is this is our uh like mostly all of the sections are done top bar this section and that section is done there is one more one more thing that we want here you can see that for the banner there is a nice shadow kind of an effect here like if you can observe or not this nice shadow kind of an effect like in our case it is completely like uh, ending uh at the what do you say at the section but you can actually add a nice shadow kind of uh like a like what do you say like a fade uh in the bottom uh, so that you don't actually uh, have to like just uh, stop very uh, uh, with a with a with an with a normal border instead of like a fading kind of a border over here. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little hack here. So in the at the end of this content in the content itself, or maybe or maybe in the like after the end of uh, like a final section, which is the header itself before the header itself. So here I can add one more div. I can add one. Just give me one second. I can add a one more div by just adding a class only to fade, only to bottom, banner bottom, banner bottom fade. Okay, this this particular section is only to fade in the uh, like a bottom section of uh, an application. Okay, so now you can. You can uh, style this class, the class name. You can style this class by adding a little bit of uh, background color, or otherwise you can directly pick it from the uh, like uh, from the section itself. But I wanted to add some gradient. Uh, linear gradient uh, uh, between uh, the topper section of an uh, uh, like uh, image and the bottom section of an image. So here I can I can uh, simply add some uh, background color here. But before that I can add height. How much height that I wanted to keep this section? Because uh, let's say if I add uh, twenty pixel, right? And uh, let me remove this background color. If I add twenty pixel, if I go section here, so this background section will be banner. Uh, Kind of irritating. Let's call this. Okay, so inside the header, 
you have the banner bottom you can see a slight uh, 20 pixel uh, at the bottom fade here right so you can you can either make it to 30 pixel or 50 pixel as well let me see like until the section has ended Okay, the 60 pixel which is which is in this border section itself all right so now here we can uh, add some background image which is a linear gradient or like a simple background image uh, let me add first of all a background color i'll show you how i wanted to do it let's say if i add red color here so you can see this background color red has been added but in this section instead of a red color i wanted to add a small linear gradient here I want to add a small gradient over here, right? So that's why I wanted to add an image, like a small image, but I want to construct an image here, which is from linear. If you're not sure about linear gradient, maybe you should uh, like identify, like learn about uh, that. Which 90 degrees and uh, transparent i'm not exactly sure the uh, the rgba color of this one let me find it out banner fade one degrees transparent okay this is an rgba and it's one 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 we copy this put it over here Okay. Now you can now you can observe a small fade uh, here in this section. Like even if I refresh the page right now, there is a small fade in this section, right? Instead of like uh, without adding, let, let me let, let me comment this section and see how it looks like. It's a very like a sharp here, but uh, by adding this piece of a code by using the, with the help of a linear gradient uh, and uh, or like by adding this color, uh, then you can actually fade out a little bit on the bottom of this particular section. So that's why I separately added this bottom fade uh, section by adding a separate, uh, let's say height, so that it can dedicate, it can, we can have a dedicated uh, space to add this particular fading section. So this is one thing that maybe you could uh, add it. Okay, all right, so uh, mostly uh, you can you can, you can can go on in, in adding this, let's say when I click on individual image, what needs to be happen when I click on individual image, let's say you have to go to another section, uh, which we can use the help of React Router concept here and uh, create another component and uh, render that particular component. And you can also display the tailors as well. Like in the original Netflix, when you hover it, it'll like, like op open up the pop-up, like completely pop-up and display the trailer element as well. You can add everything on top of that, but due to some time limitation issues, we cannot obviously discuss everything from that. But yeah, so I think mostly I believe that you understand what I'm trying to say, like more or less. Uh, uh, you can uh, actually use that. So there are a couple of questions that I can answer. So Hari Babu is asking, uh, we have to use box shadow to fade, right? So box shadow is not actually fading on top of it. Box shadow will fade, will add an effect on the behind the section. So it's not actually like a fading in that case. It's, like, it's actually adding a shadow, which is behind this particular section. Let's say, for example, I have this Netflix, right? This Netflix. So Netflix logo, where is the Netflix logo? Uh, it is a Netflix logo. It is a banner. Okay, this is now bar. Okay, so let me add a box shadow to this one. So you can observe the difference between this and this. You will have the box shadow of Netflix behind the uh, Netflix, which is box shadow. Let's say a ten pixel, ten pixel red, just for you to show and understand. You can see the box shadow is behind it. It's not on top of it. Shadow is basically like a behind an element, like we, but we wanted to add an image here in this, we, we are technically adding an image here. We are not adding any shadow effect here. Like technically it is a fade effect, but from the technical point of view, from the programming point of view, we are adding an image here until 60 pixel. And that image is basically like a linear gradient. Linear gradient is basically like reducing the color from one format to the less format. That's what the linear gradient is. And now you can adding an image, you are constructing a known image here here in this section with the linear gradient so that your 
like a color of which is starting from the black, which is one one one, which is which is like that's why you can see it is nicely, uh, it is nicely like uh, mixed with this uh, this this background color because the linear gradient of this plus one 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 you can observe the banner. You can observe this one one one. This is equal to the background image of an application. That's why it is nicely mixing with this particular background, right? So we are adding on top of an image. There's a separate dedicated section in the image. We are adding a linear gradient on top of that particular image. But box shadow is like and behind of this particular image. All right. That's what the difference between uh, like a box shadow and uh, the background image to add a apply a fade event. We do not need this. Where did I add the box shadow? Okay. All right. So yeah. So this is what uh, I wanted to uh, discuss and explain. And of course, this is not the end for this uh, particular Netflix application. You can keep on increasing the complexity of it. You can open the. You can open. Let's say. Uh, like a new model over on top of it and display the trailer you can create a profile so you can create uh, a lot of stuff like actually uh, but it's completely up to you like how much extent that you wanted to go because netflix is not like a very simple application that you can have to build it in one uh what do you say uh three uh, two, two to three hours itself so you can keep on, keep on increasing the complexity you can keep on adding the like layers to it but the whole point of taking this particular uh, webinar is to show you the advantage of the react js so that how easy it will be because you have seen like within two hours itself i think it's almost three hours uh, uh within like, approximately two and after three hours within two and after three hours we have built this entire page front page of netflix which is pretty similar to this only like we haven't spent a lot of amount of time right because we have reused a lot of components we have we have uh, like uh, uh, styled it properly so that's one of the useful advantage of react js uh, which you can actually able to reuse a component following the declarative approaches instead of an imperative approaches and you can you can have a lot of uh, other functionalities as well in react js uh, to optimize the renderings and uh, to use a use effect properly but uh, we can we can talk about that in maybe like during the program or somewhere else uh, but as of now i think this will be fine uh, this is what i wanted to discuss focus on uh, what react js can do and uh, try to uh, take this as an example as a reference and uh, try to increase the complexity of this application and keep on building more and more pages here. So you can use the help of React Router uh, package to create multiple pages and to render multiple pages in the same application as a single page application. Okay, so I don't want to explain the single page application part of it right now in this breakout because since I wanted to focus on this particular page itself. All right. So yeah. So if you have any questions, you can ask it in the chat. Uh, otherwise, that's all I wanted to discuss. I'll. Uh, Hand it over to uh, Lavina so that he can she can uh, explain him all the other details. But before that, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Just post it in the questions thread.